Shabo Wakatu. This is Daku. And today, President Obama of the United Snakes of America told us that it would be disingenuous to say that there have been no changes since 1963 or since the March on Washington in 1963. And you may think something's wrong with me, but I totally agree with the president. I totally agree with the president. Things have changed. Don't worry, I haven't been drugged. I haven't been kidnapped. I'm not reading <laughs> from a note that my kidnappers have given me. I totally agree with President Obama that things have changed. He said it would be disingenuous and disrespectful for us to say that things haven't changed haven't changed. We would be disrespecting the efforts of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the others that fought for our civil rights in this country. Once again, the president is right. The changes that Martin Luther King Jr. wanted, he got it's a fact. We have become integrated. We can eat with the white man. We can become as educated as the white man is. We can work with the white man. We can marry the white man and white woman. We are totally integrated in the white man society. If we get to some level of financial gain, that is. So, America offers for black people, as well as other people, the opportunity to become better slaves for the white man. It's true. What has changed since 1963? We have become the best slaves that we ever have been since the white man came into the hells of North America. You notice I didn't say since we came into the hells of North America. I said since the white man came into the hells of North America. Because we were already here. Many of us. When the white man arrived. It's a well known fact. That our ancestors were here to greet the white man at the shores. Just like we were on all the continents. Greeting the white man at the shores. He was like, damn. These niggas is all over the planet. What the hell is going on here? How come we didn't know this was over here? And of course, some will tell you about the Scandinavians that came to the hills of North America before Columbus. I don't have a problem with that. People traveled the world. But it's a fact that the black man and black woman were already here in America. The copper-skinned people. <laughs> and I'm copper-complected. The copper-skinned people were already here in the hills of North America. Of course, it wasn't the hills of North America until the white man brought the hell with him. But that's a whole nother story. So things have changed. We are better slaves now than we ever have been. So I totally agree with the President of the United Snakes of America. The next thing I want to address is the exchange that the brothers had on 125th Street. I was able to see the exchange on www.kingnobleblackrulership.com. The most revolutionary 
website that we have. So you got to go if you want to see the most revolutionary information. If you want to get your black supremacy news, you got to go to the website. And don't forget to support those black organizations that are willingly attempting to build our own black nation. Attempting to tear down the system of racism, white supremacy, and put an end to the black holocaust. But that was a sidebar. I want to address what was being said on 125th Street. Something that one of the brothers said. He said that the white man don't have no power over me. Out of one side of his mouth. Out of the other side of his mouth, <laughs> he said, if the white man come down the street right now, and tell me to move, I'm going to move. You know what? I'm a street dude. Okay? That's just the long and short of it. I'm a street dude. And I respect other street brothers and sisters. Because street brothers and sisters are, at the same time they are brainwashed, <laughs> they're not as brainwashed as most of the masses of asses. And the reason I say that is because street brothers and sisters have seen so much reality that they believe in the reality that they see. So they don't play these games, and I call them religious games, of talking about principle. Now, I understand the principle of I'm not a victim. I understand the principle of I have power. I, have, I understand the principle of I'm sovereign. But a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video that I recorded down at the, Ameri the so-called American Indian Museum in Washington, D.C., in which... The Indians were calling themselves sovereign. Alright? And I believe this is these are all just word games. Because we all, all of us that are conscious deep down, we all believe the same damn thing. So we just playing word games right now. We just playing word games. That's why I really gravitate towards street people. Because they don't tend to play as many word games. Unless, unless they're trying to pimp you or hustle you. <laughs> but anyway, we playing word games. The, Amer the so-called American Indian in one of the reservations was saying that they're sovereign <laughs> because they own the reservation and they got some land from the white man. They said, we didn't ask the white man for this land. We told them. <laughs> Sound like that street bullshit. I told you, nigga. We told the white man that we want this land right here. You told the white man. Well, in the same, a couple of sentences later, out the other side of your neck, you said, and the white man agreed that we would have so many acres of land. But then the white man changed his mind <laughs> and said, nah, we ain't going to give you 10 acres. I'm just giving you an example. We ain't going to give you 10 acres of land. We're going to give you 5 acres of land. And really the acres were in the millions, y'all. I'm just giving you a little basic scenario here. So how are you going to tell me that you're in charge of yourself and that we don't play that shit, Joe? This is how we roll. We told the white man that this is what we going to do. But the white man said, I tell you what, this is what I'm going to allow you to have. Instead of 10 acres, I'm going to give you 5 acres. Now what you going to do about it? The so-called sovereign Native American said, yes, a boss. 
Well, you take the five. <laughs> so you telling me you sovereign because you can go establish your own. You think it's your own, but when a white man come, you got to get the fuck up out of there. Look, I'm of that older generation. I'm one of the elders now. Whether I like it or not. It's a fact. But don't think that all of the elders are punks. Don't think that all of the elders are afraid of the white man. Some of the elders listen to and learn from the great teacher. Learn from the ancestors. Learn from black wisdom. And black wisdom. Or Akawu teaches us. As black people, that we have the greatest gift and the greatest power that any human being has on this planet. And that is the power of creativity. As dumbed down as we are, as miseducated as we are, we have given and produced some of the greatest music forms in the history of the world. Or the greatest music forms in the history of the world. While we were right here. Under the goddamn white man in the United Snakes of America. Here. In the hells of North America. We have done that. While under subjugation. We have done that as slaves. Imagine what we could do. As free men and women. Some of our inventions. The list is many. Everyone on the planet benefits from today. You think the Chinese are so smart? You say the Japanese are so intelligent? You say the white man is so powerful? Negroes get on my nerves. The black man and black woman, they're just stagnant. They just don't want to work. Some of the most progressive inventions that all people on the planet Earth benefit from came from the mind of the black man and black woman. So study Blacks in Science by Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. Study all of the great inventions that have come from the minds of the black man and black woman. You must understand that that's where your power is. You think the revolution is based on guns and bullets. While the white man is attacking you. Through the food you eat. Through the water you drink. Through his unjust, unjust laws. He's attacking you with his miseducational system. He's attacking you through the media. Through the television. Through the newspapers. He's attacking your children. With you. The elders. He's, atta he's attacking you. With your, your children. He's attacking you. With these liquor stores he put in your neighborhoods. He's attacking you with the poisonous food. Fast food restaurants he put all throughout your neighborhoods. And I've said that before. That ain't nothing new. We are powerful because we have this creative force and power that nobody else has. That's what we have to tap into. We keep thinking, yeah, we got to get enough money because we get in the army and the army needs guns and the army needs weapons. Yes, the army needs weapons, fool. But you got to create your own weapons. You got to produce your own food. You got to grow your own security forces to protect your babies from these predators out here, from child molestation. You got to protect your babies from child molestation. We keep jumping all over the faggots. We keep jumping all over the blacks that are shooting other black people. But have we established a security force to lock that shit down? No, we haven't. The Nation of Islam 